Students, welcome to Ardent MTS. This is JBE. Just before exam, the mode of the just before exam is more important points, more points in a list. Let's start with the topic directly about SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19. What is the difference between SARS-CoV-2 and COVID-19? Many of the students will think both are same. Is it? No. What is COVID? COVID is CO for Corona, VI for Virus, D for Disease. So COVID is disease. And what is SARS-CoV-2? Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus. So SARS-CoV-2 is a microorganism. COVID is a disease. Both are different. For an example, varicella zoster and chickenpox. So chickenpox is a disease. The microorganism which causes this is varicella zoster. There are few similar type of virus which is seen in 2002 and 2012. So in 2012, it is called as MERS, Middle East Respiratory Syndrome. And 2002, it is called as SARS. Both are present as an epidemic, that type. So coming to the classification, the family is about coronavirus, coronaviridae, and the genus is beta coronavirus. And suborder is cornidoviridae. And order is very important, nidovirus. So this is very important. You may get a question from this. Realm is ribovirae. Realm is a virus which belongs to the same family of things. So ribovirae, which is a, belongs to RNA dependent RNA polymerase. Right, coming to the morphology. So this virus is a spherical in shape, 100 to 150 nanometer in the diameter, and it have a club shaped spike projection which gives crown like appearance those that what is called as coronavirus and it has a it represent as a large genome and it has non segmented positive sense single stranded rna and coming to the proteins which present in the covid so this is called remember smen what is smen s for spike glycoprotein s for spike glycoprotein this is what called as spike glycoprotein which helps for the attachment of the virus to the cells so this is a homotrimer this is a homotrimer and what is m m for membrane protein and if you see this this orange color proteins so this is called as membrane protein and what is e e is envelope protein so this is yellow color so this is what called as envelope protein and what is the last one n n is just a nucleoprotein which is associated with the rna right so S for spike protein, M for membrane protein, E for envelope protein, N for nucleoprotein. You may get it a question from here like all this are present in a protein in a coronavirus except. Coming to the mode of transmission, so it transmitted through infected droplets, aerosol spread. Aerosol spread is one of the more important route for us dentistry and contact transmission through fomites. Fomites are inanimate objects. Fico oral route also transmit the coronavirus. So coming to the threat levels, we have three important levels. It's called variant of interest, variant of concern, and variant of high consequence. You may get it a question like what is called as variant of interest. So variant of interest is, so this type of virus, so this type of variant, which present as a cluster in a particular area. So so it's called as variant of interest. So either increased proportion of cases or decreased proportion of cases are seen in variant of the interest right coming to the variant of concern variance of concern as the name says concern it is a really concern and alpha beta gamma delta all this will come under more variant of concern so this produces more severe disease and more contagious and even if you give vaccine, it doesn't more effective. So the antibiotic produced by the vaccine or the previous infections doesn't affect too much in case of variant of concern. So among this alpha, beta, gamma, delta, which is present in India. So this variant is present in India, that is delta. Coming to the variant of interest, which is common in India, again, kappa. So in variant of interest, if they ask you in India, it is kappa. In case of variant of concern, it is belongs to the delta. But you have to know all other things also. Alpha is present in UK and beta variant is in South Africa and gamma variant is in Brazil. So these are the yearly documented samples. So the first documented case in delta is in India. Coming to the variant of high consequence. So these consequences very serious about this. Most of the patients belongs to this variant will be hospitalized and the antibiotics which is induced by the vaccine 
or the previous infection does not affect you much, even antiviral drugs are also not effective in case of variant of high consequence. Coming to the pathology of COVID-19, which is the major organ affected? Yes, everybody can tell, right? So, the organ is lungs. What is the most consistent finding? Just remember as that diffuse alveolar damage, thromboemboli in pulmonary vessels which decreases the gas transfusion, which affects the gas transfusion and also there is presence in percent of inflammatory hypercoagulable state. So, this is if the patient goes for inflammatory hypercoagulable state, the patient have a very poor prognosis. So, how to determine this, how to check this, whether the patient has a prone to inflammatory hypercoagulable state. You can go for D dimer. So, by based on this marker, you can tell about the patient is prone to inflammatory hypercoagulable state. Coming to the pathogenesis, this virus enters through upper respiratory tract and in the initial asymptomatic phase of 1 to 2 days, the virus which binds to a receptor called as ACE2 receptors, angiotensin converting enzyme 2 receptors. Once it joins with the AC2 receptors with the help of a receptor binding domain of the spike protein. So, this spike protein which has a domain called as a receptor domain which attached to the ACE receptors, then it goes for a conformational change. So, when it goes for a conformational change, there is a fusion of virus with the host membrane occurs. So, once the virus fused with the host membrane, the next step is activation of type 2 transmembrane serine protease. Just remember type 2 transmembrane serine protease will be activated in the host cell. So, these enzymes which clear all this AC receptors and activates the spike glycoprotein. So, once the spike glycoprotein is activated more, this virus enters inside the cell. Once the virus enters inside the cell, so this is a single standard RNA virus. Once the virus entered into the cell, there is a process called as uncoating occur. Mean the nucleic acids will come out in the cytoplasm. These nucleic acids will be replicated by a process called as translation. Translation is protein synthesis. So this is replicated. Finally, assembling of the virus again occur. So uh, once the assembly of virus again occur, it goes for exocytosis exocytosis is it just break and all the virus comes out this virus which again infect all the other alveolar cells. So, this is what happening in the pathogenesis. So, I just repeat one more time it enters into the upper respiratory tract number one in the initial asymptomatic phase of one to two days it just joins with ACE2 receptors go for a conformational change then it fuses with the host cell membrane and once it fuses, there is an enzyme activation occur that is type 2 transmembrane serine protease. So, this clear all the AC receptors and further activates the spike glycoprotein. So, it the virus enters into the cell, uncoating occurs. So, this RNA which comes out in the cytoplasm, the nucleic acid which comes in the cytoplasm, replication of the nucleic acid occur, finally assembling of the virus which comes down by the process called as exocytosis which infect all the other cells. Clear. Coming to the maximum number of AC2 receptors present in where? Maximum number of AC2 receptors are present in especially lungs. Type 2 pneumocytes. What is very special about type 2 pneumocytes? Physiology. Type 2 pneumocytes which is responsible for responsible for surfactant synthesis. Gut, heart and kidney all the organs which has maximum AC2 receptors. Again one of the important multiple chest question you may get it from here. Coming to the clinical features, so the patients affected by COVID, 80 percentage of the cases are mild, only 20 percentage will go for moderate and severe and even in this 20 percentage, 15 percentage will respond to oxygen therapy and 5 percentage of patients need ventilatory support. What are the symptoms which are seen in various days? So starting from the day 5. So, initially the patient have fever, diarrhea or anosmia, all the symptoms will be there. So, the major symptoms appear at day 5. So, this is the first day and if this is the fifth day, the patient started to having breathing difficulty at day 5. And the patient if admitted for the hospitalization, 
for the dyspnea on the seventh day. And once the dyspnea started from the next day, sixth to ninth day, which is called as cytokine storm. So what is the cytokine storm? So the release of cytokines like interleukins, especially interleukin 6, MCQ, tumor necrosis factor, all this which affects the organs, internal organs. So we have to control this cytokines, we have to control this inflammatory mediators. So that's why the very gold standard drug used in this phase is corticosteroids. Corticosteroids control this. So, if the patient does not take the corticosteroids, he may be affected by various multiple organs will be affected. And if the patient is not treated properly at the ninth day, the patient may prone for ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome, the patient may go for ventilatory support. What are the various symptoms which are seen in COVID? So, here I classify them into systemic, number one respiratory number two, miscellaneous number three. So coming to the systemic, which is the most common manifestation, fever, right? Fever, which is seen in how many percentage of cases? A 75 to 81 percentage of the patients have fever. So again, this is one of the very important multiple choice questions, which is the most common symptom in COVID-19, fever. And coming to the respiratory, most common respiratory symptom is cough around 54 to 60 percentage patients will have cough in the respiratory. Apart from this cough, the patient may have V hemoptysis that is blood in the sputum. Hypasmia. Hypasmia is loss of taste sensation, loss of smell. Hypasmia is loss of smell. Right. And the patient may go for rhinorrhea, pneumonia, respiratory failure. Coming to the miscellaneous, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting, headache will be seen. What percentage of patients will have headache or which is the most common miscellaneous? So around 10 to 16 percentage of the patients may go for headache. Coming to the important odd and golden points related to the COVID, what are the type of proteins present in the SARS-CoV-2? Just remember SMEN, spike protein, membrane protein, envelope protein, nucleoprotein. AC receptors are mandatory for SARS-CoV-2 to enter. Is it true or false? So many of the students think it is true. Because we studied in a pathogenesis, it binds with AC receptors. AC receptors just facilitate for the virus to enter, but AC receptors are not mandatory for the SARS-CoV-2 to enter. So answer is false. So this is the keyword. What is the order of coronavirus? Nidoviral. Patient should be, can be considered non-infectious 14 days from the onset of symptoms. What is the median incubation period of COVID-19? 2 to 14 days and what is the maximum virus shedding seen in? Maximum virus shedding seen in 6 to 8 hours before the onset of symptoms. Full form of COVID-19 is coronavirus disease. Most common symptom of COVID-19 is, just now we discussed, fever. Right. Last is about cytokine storm started at the day of day 6. Right. So all these points, what we studied till now, which is given here in Art and Flash for a fast recap, just take a pause and go through all the points which is given here. So here I just covered about classification. So what are the proteins, morphology, and what is called as various of interest, concern, high consequence, what are the symptoms, and what about the pathogenesis. Right. So coming to the more important questions related to the COVID. So what is coronavirus? So coronavirus is a single standard RNA virus. Yes. All are gender of the coronavirus. Alpha, beta, gamma, delta, all these are gender of the coronavirus. So answer is none of the above. Which strain of coronavirus is known to cause common cold? HCOV 229E. HCOV OC43. This is one more strain of coronavirus which causes common cold. Name the strain which is causes epidemic in or outbreak in 2012. So this is Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, COVID. Name the receptors which SARS-CoV-2 targets, AC receptors we studied, right? And the home quarantine period is for, for from a contact with confirmed case. So this is 14 days. And incubation period for COVID-19 is around 2 to 14 days. Respiratory droplets for the COVID-19 can infect a person in what range of disease? 3 to 6 feet. So that's why 
we have to maintaining the social distancing of 3 to 6 feet what is the time period which coronavirus can remain airborne if the person coughs into the environment the virus can still there for 3 hours which cell of the alveoli is affected by the covid 19 it affects type 2 pneumocytes so type 2 pneumocyte is the cell which is responsible for production of the surfactant so the patient may go for acute respiratory distress syndrome which is the main enzyme responsible for the replication of sars cov 2 virus that is rdrp so rna dependent rna polymerase so fourth option which are the following changes are noticed in the lung of a covid patient so patient can have hypoxia interstitial edema increased work of breathing so we can go for all of the above which of the following is not a symptom of covid 19 pneumonia so decrease in respiratory rate usually in covid 19 respiratory rate is increased and if the respiratory rate is more than 30 then the patient is considered a severe case of covid 19 which of this is a feature of pneumonia due to covid 19 so there is a hyperplasia of the type 2 pneumocyte is present because the type 2 pneumocyte is affected by the covid and proteinases exudate is seen in exudate usually seen in all inflammatory conditions alveolar macrophages are seen so answer for this is all of the above all these are structural proteins present in the coronavirus except spike protein membrane protein envelope protein all this present so answer for this is none of the above so these are the variant points which you have to know related to the COVID-19. Hope it was very useful. Thank you.